This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, so if you're looking to buy or sell cards, then definitely check out their site linked in the description. I'm a big fan of how they do business, so check them out and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video over on Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro 2, and I'm going to be playing with Mermails, the Link Mermail deck that I have been uh, doing a couple of comp tutorials with. Uh, people have wanted a deck list and all that sort of stuff, but I don't have that for you today. But I do have some gameplay to give you. So, hmm. I actually have no idea what Neptibus plus Gund plus uh, Megalo does. So we're going to find out how this one goes. Uh, no, I do not want to ash my own card. But Neptibus, add Dragoons, send Dragoons. This Dragoons can activate. To add another Megalo. Which I could then, uh, I could then drop the two Megalo. I could drop Megalo. Um, discarding uh, Gund and Megalo, that would allow me to make a thing. If I played Link Spider, I could Link Spider away with the Neptibus, but that's not a play that can be done right now. Um, but it's just that engrave, so I'll be able to manipulate some graveyard resources accordingly. I could summon the Aqua Spirit, um, but that would require me to banish the Dragoons. But I could summon the Aqua Spirit again later by adding it back. All right, so let's let's kind of let's kind of. Let's let's kind of just do this in its own way. Um, so I can discard Megalo and Dragoons to summon Megalo. Uh, but I also want to trigger the Dragoons, which is the interesting bit. Um, I get special this, banishing there, make uh, my Star Boy. Yeah, okay. We're just gonna we're just gonna go freely into this. I have no idea what this does actually. I haven't put nearly as much time in with this deck as I should have at this point. Uh, but it should still be workable. Uh, but So I'll discard the Megalo and the Gund so that the Megalo gets brought back off of the Gund, and then I get the Abyss Sphere. Uh, and so what we'll have is, at the very least, we'll definitely have an Abyss Sphere, and we'll definitely be able to trigger this Dragoons, I'm thinking. Uh, but So yeah, we'll go into Mistar Boy. We'll go into it with these two. I'll make my Galaxy Tomahawk. Summon all of my shit. Uh, one, two, please. There we go. And I should still be able to do, like, a Firewall Dragon play. At least. At the very least, I should be able to summon a Firewall Dragon. Oh, it's gonna make me select every single position. Oh, God. No. Not this. Um, Alright, so... Now from here, Proxy Dragon with this and this here, and I can make Firewall, which I can then put cards back into my hand to utilize, so that could work. Uh, so we'll go into Firewall with this one and two, so we'll get rid of those for the Firewall Dragon here. And then I'll Link Spider on top of the Firewall up here. And so now that Firewall can add back Megalo, Neptibus, and Aqua Spirit um, as options, I can add back. I definitely need to add back Megalo. Um, now the question is do I add back Aqua Spirit or do I add back Neptibus? Um, I definitely have to add back Aqua Spirit 100%. But so we'll activate this, get back Aqua Spirit. And get back Megalo. Well, actually, this this doesn't work as well as I was. Well, no, I can make uh, Gaia with these, and then that'll trigger summoning the uh, Dragoons out of my hand. Then this can be summoned. Yes. Okay. So this is how this works. All right. So we'll do this, and then I can. Let's see. How many waters are engraved? One, two, three, four. All right. I can make the Decode Talker instead of this. Um, and that would give me some targeting protection, which would kind of be worthwhile. But at the same time, I don't want to give my opponent the extra zone. So I will just link with these two into the Gaia Saber here. The Firewall will special the Dragoons out of my hand. And then I've got, I've still got four in Grave, right? Yes, I do. All right, well then. I'm not going to be able to Mooling Glace, but I am still going to be able to Toad, so that's fine. So we'll banish this to summon this here. And unless I want to Link again, which I could do, I could use the Bahamut. 
uh, and go into a uh, another firewall dragon here. And that would actually probably be some worthwhile nonsense. Uh, but for a flying blind, this is coming out a little bit better than I had hoped. Uh, so I can activate this to get rid of the dragoons. And that will summon a toad. I'll summon it up here. And then this effect will activate. Uh, I, let's see, I've got four still, right? We've got one, two, three, four of them in grave. Uh, if I linked with this, this would put it up to six, unfortunately. But I could link up to six and then firewall a card back to my hand. Um, so, no. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, yeah, grab the Moulin Glaze. And then I'm going to link away with Bahamut. Um, I'm going to link away with Bahamut and this. Where are we doing? Ah, fuck me. I canceled out the command. So we'll do these two into another firewall. Uh, this firewall could special the Megalo out of my hand, although I don't want it to. No. Um, and then we'll activate this to put back one of the waters in my hand. And so what we'll put back is we will put back the gunned, yeah, and so that should be five waters, unless I've horribly miscalculated, <laughs> but I don't think I have. So we'll special this, and then we'll take two cards. I love this, I love how there's like infinite ways to, um, oh, spirals, oh. I love how there's infinite ways to, uh, to first turn, um, to first turn fucking, uh, Moulin Blaze now. Like, even if you're just bumbling about like an idiot, you can still make it happen. Because, I mean, that's literally what I just did. Um, I used both my firewalls in the process, but it's still something that I was capable of doing. Um, and I discarded Quick Fix and Utility Wire. That's a gofu. Um, yeah, sure, you can have that. I don't really care about that. Um, he's getting his two tokens. He'll be able to link away with them into something that's probably not super duper relevant. The thing is, if he's playing double helix, this is perfectly fine for me, because I can just Ash Blossom the double helix, and that, like, stops his play. Um, so this is still fine. Uh, if he attacks into the Toad, uh, I don't get to negate a card uh, with it, but, like, at the same time, he's wasted his battle phase, and uh, I still get a card back, so I don't really care if the Toad necessarily negates anything with, uh, with this particular play string. But he is just going to go straight into a Decode Talker, uh, which can attack over the Toad, which is fine. Uh, it'll add back a card like the Dragoons or the Neptabyss, which I could then utilize um, on a following turn. Because if I add back Neptabyss, um, well, now that there's a card on your field, um, like, there's no way that... Now that there's a card on the field that's going to kill uh, the Toad anyway... There's no way in hell that I'm not just taking it. And you know what, I might as well take it. Even though I have no targets in my extra deck for it because of how tight uh, the extra deck is. Um, it's still going to be fine for me. Uh, but, let's see. I could add a card back and then special it. Uh, sure. <laughs> we'll, we'll go... We'll go... Uh, we'll go one, two. So that I can add a card back and then special it. Um, I don't know what card I would be adding back. <laughs> um, I guess Aqua Spirit, and I could special summon it. Um, no, I can't do that. That's a bad play. Um, fuck, I guess I could just summon the Megalo. This is, this is all options. The Abyss Sphere will let me, tri will let me trigger the gun and all that anyway, so I don't really think it's a bother. So I'll just summon this. Um... I've still got the Abyss Sphere down, which I can use for Pike or Turge, uh, and then just immediately discard Dragoons or whatever. Or I do have Lind in my deck, so I could in phase it. Um, I've got Ash Blossom for double Helix, as I've already said. He's got two cards I need to kind of be worried about, but at the same time, I don't think that this is going to be a problem, uh, because even though these Firewall Dragons are used, they are still big, beefy bodies that continually put cards on my field, so that's something that... I'm not going to get OTK'd through unless he has, like, Dark Hole right here. Or Raigeki right here. Oh, my opponent is trying to go to the end of the turn. I'll just activate Abyss Sphere. Uh, and summon my Lind. Because I'm not really doing anything else major with it, but I definitely want to trigger this Dragoons. Uh, 100%. But yeah, there's just not enough room in the extra deck for Instant Fusion targets. 
Um, maybe that can change? I don't know. I don't know if this is the right way to be playing the deck, but it sure as hell does feel a lot like more satisfying than just making one uh, Mastar Boy and then just passing. Like it feels feels a lot more uh, more complete to do it this way. But so he attempted to end phase, uh, or he attempted to end whatever phase he was in. It didn't tell me if he was trying to go to battle phase or not, and I don't know if that's something that Yu-Gi-Oh Pro even, Two even does because um, it might not be coded to do that. Uh, but it said he was like attempted to end his phase, and so at that point I have to flip Abyss Sphere so that the Lind would die in his end phase, because if I flip this during the end phase, it doesn't die. It stays on the board until the next, um, the, my opponent's next end phase, uh, because of the way it's worded. It says next end phase. Okay, there we go. So, now the Abyss Lind will activate, which I could use, I can use to add back the Nept Abyss, but I'm going to be triggering a Dragoon Search anyway, so I will just get Pike. Um, I'll save the Turge for later, because resources are pretty important with this specific build. But we'll do that, and we will add a OSHA, because OSHA can do things with the entirety of this play structuring, um, depending on how we want to handle the business. But, how this is going to go, is I'm going to just go ahead and add, I can add another Megalo, which I can then drop. Yeah, might as well, right? Might as well. I can tribute this and then drop the Megalo and then attack. Uh, this can suicide. Not too big of an issue. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see. Yes. We'll activate this. Activate this thing's ability to tribute this. And then I can suicide here. Or I could have tributed this and then it would have uh, lowered this thing's attack. And I think that's what I will do. So I'm going to make this Megalo be able to attack twice. Because this skips the battle phase of my next turn. It doesn't skip my next battle phase. It skips the battle phase of the next turn. Uh, but So I will discard the Turge and the Osha. Just because they are free. And I will then do this. Tributing this. So now these Megalos can attack over. Um, I can actually summon summon a card out of my hand if I had another one, but I'm not going to. <sighs> and then uh, I can make Flare Metal if I don't kill him. Flare Metal is the only other rank 7 I play in this deck besides Galaxy Tomahawk. Um, because it's just like, if I can't kill my opponent, I'm going to make it to where they have to burn themselves to death. So my opponent has surrendered. Alright. Now, okay, so what do I side against Spirals? Um, that's the thing. I'm going second, and I don't have a lot of hand traps. Hmm. Well, aside the Twin Twister, I could side Gamma Seals. And I can take out the, like, OSHA package. Because if I take those out, then it allows me uh, more freedom of space to work with. Um. Uh, take out that. And yeah, okay, we'll go to the next game. I think I'm okay with that side decking pattern. I may just blur out the deck list on the, uh, on the program just to, just to kind of tease you all that keep asking for deck list! Deck list! Deck list! Come on, man. You guys, you guys are smart enough to figure it out. At least I hope so. Um, oh, my opponent has told me to go first. Well, this is problematic. Um, <laughs> this is a problem. Uh, oh god, and now Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro 2 is freezing. Please, no. No, please! No, please! There we go. Wait, no. It's, it's not back yet. Come on. Come on! I know you have it in you. I know you can do it. Please! Come back! It's because of these fucking things over here. Is because of how you can see over the uh, over the heavy infantry where it's got the two uh, the two set in zones. No, I don't want to end the process. My opponent left. My opponent probably didn't want to tell me to go first. I don't know. We'll find out. I have no idea. But my opponent has left the game for some reason. I guess he didn't plan on letting me go first. I don't know. I'm I'm so I don't know why my opponent would just leave like that unless they didn't mean to tell me to go first. In which case. Get fucked, but at the same time, my hand sucks. So, anyway, 
I'm going to just cut this video here. I'm going to probably film some more Mermail Duel videos coming up in the next couple of days. There might be another one that goes up today as well. Uh, just because a lot of you guys seem pretty interested in Mermails when I start messing around with it. And I had no idea what that first hand was actually supposed to do. And I probably played it really horribly. So, ooh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro 2 has crashed itself for me. How neat. All right. Time to figure out what's up there. But anyway, I'm going to cut this video short here. So, as always, guys, thanks for watching. And let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. As always, like, comment, subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do. Subscribe if you're new here and want to see more awesome Yu-Gi-Oh! content all that sort of stuff. And links, as always, are in the description to my Facebook fan page as well as my personal Patreon page. If you want to support the channel directly and you like the videos I've been producing and want to support my ability to continue making them, then Patreon is the best way to do so. As well as it gets you access into monthly giveaways for sizable amounts of Yu-Gi-Oh! product around the size of a box in terms of value, as well as possible access into my private Discord server where me and a bunch of other people chat on a daily basis about Yu-Gi-Oh!, other fandoms, stupid shit, all that sort of nonsense. So, if you're interested in any of that, then definitely go check out the reward tiers over on Patreon itself, and I thank you in advance for any support you'd like to give the channel. But other than that, as always, guys, special thanks to Travis Miller, Iradium, Jay Garcia, Yuki Phoenix, and Troy Perkins, as well as everybody else that is currently supporting me on Patreon this month. You help out a lot more than you may know, and as always, you have my eternal gratitude. But as I've already said, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Again, if you want to see more Mermo videos and stuff like that, I'd be happy to oblige because I really like playing this deck. It's one of my favorite decks to play in Yu-Gi-Oh! history. But other than that, thanks for your time, and as usual, guys, take care. I'll see you in the next video. Time to figure out why Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro crashed.